I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie, and this is The Cool Part Show, our show all about innovative, interesting 3D printed parts. On this episode, we're going to look at cool parts we saw at the Formnext Expo in Frankfurt, Germany. Formnext, biggest event of the year for additive manufacturing. We spent time at the show meeting with exhibitors, learning about new technology developments, new applications and markets for 3D printing, and of course, looking for cool parts. <laughs> So, so here we go. This is not comprehensive, and this is in no particular order, but here are eight 3D printed parts that caught our attention at Formnext this year. All right, we'll start with this. This is a center console for a BMW Group vehicle. It's on display in the Hans Weber booth, uh, printed on one of their robot-driven LFAM printers, uh, large format additive manufacturing. It's a pellet-based system. The console is 3D printed from Acromid PA11, um, a material from Acroplastics, and it is 40% carbon fiber um, and also is a, uh, a sustainably based material. So this design consolidates what previously would have been seven different assemblies parts into just one, including integrating the air ducts through the, the center console. Um, it can be printed in about three hours and 40 minutes. There's a little bit of, of post machining that needs to happen before it's ready for installation, but it's pretty minimal. And by changing from that conventional assembly to this 3D printed design, BMW Group was able to reduce the time it takes to make this part, to reduce the cost of the part, to reduce its weight by 30%, which translates to fuel savings and better efficiency in the vehicle. And and all of these changes together have added up to um, a reduction in the carbon footprint for the full vehicle of about 70 kilograms. But what I think is really cool here is that this is a real serial production application for automotive. Um, BMW Group is going to need 18,000 of these parts and they're going to be going into vehicles very soon. This aluminum manifold is 3D printed through laser powder bed fusion on a machine from E plus 3D. It's for mining equipment. The manufacturer needed 150 of them. Was looking for an alternative to casting to produce this part. So the company went to Foxover Advanced Manufacturing, uh, additive manufacturing part supplier, and that manufacturer um, used its E plus 3D machine to explore different geometric choices in making this part to bring the cost down. For example, experimented with wall thickness, and it turns out uh, I could get the wall thickness down to 1.5 millimeter, and the part still delivers all of the functionality that it needs to. But the more impactful choice related to the layer height of the 3D printing. The, the manufacturer experimented with layer heights from 60 micron per layer in increments all the way up to 150 micron per layer, which worked, which was the final choice. And, and that range and that difference took the build time for 12 pieces from 67 hours at that finer layer height down to just 29 hours per build for that thicker layer height. Now, that, that thicker layer height produces a coarser part that is no problem for the functionality of this particular part. And meanwhile, the manufacturer was able to validate that the part produced that way delivered, again, all of the performance necessary, the build density necessary for this part to work. And E plus 3D said that build time reduction, and of course, correspondingly, less time spent on the machine was maybe the major factor in bringing the cost per part Part down to the point where the production cost for each of these parts was just about 100 euro. All right, this next part might look familiar to anyone who traveled to or from the show this year. This is a 3D printed replacement armrest for a passenger aircraft. It was made by AM Craft. This is a company that specializes in 3D printed replacement parts for aircraft interiors. So think overhead panels, um, seatback trays, lavatories. Uh, there are all kinds of reasons why some of these parts might break or become outdated because the aircraft is changing the interior design, the systems get updated, and AM Craft is offering a way for airlines to uh, get those replacement parts either on a more rapid timeline or um, to source parts that may not be produced any, any longer. So a typical lead time for getting a conventional uh, aircraft replacement part is something like six to eight weeks. 
AM Craft is working more in the four to six week range. So AM Craft was able to produce several hundred of these armrests for an Eastern European airline. This is replacing a part that would have been um, an injection molded piece with an over molded cover. Here it is all one solid piece of Altem 9095. Uh, to get the finish on the top, they, they sand and fill and then paint the surface so that it looks just like the part that is, it is replacing. But as a result of this, AM Craft was actually able to improve the design of this component. So there's a boss on the underside of the injection molded part, which was one of the points of failure. You'll notice that on the 3D printed version, they've made it a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. Hopefully this part will be a bit more durable this time around. So great example of how 3D printing is helping with supply chains, helping with replacement parts for a really critical application. Here is a high volume production job done through laser powder bed fusion. These little valve components are produced through what has to be uh, the most dense build packing I've seen in laser powder bed fusion as far as number of parts per square inch of build plate. So there are about 1,100 components produced per build. Uh, this is a real production part. This is made by Delva, Finnish additive manufacturing part producer. It is a tight tolerance part, relatively so. So this uh, little little piece, it, it has a component that has to go through the diameter. And then those ribs on the outside mate with the inner diameter of a larger cylinder that it passes through. So there are two critical diameter tolerances. Each of them has a tolerance band of about 100 micron. I talked with uh, Delva's chief technical officer, Marku Lindquist, and he described how to get those tolerances, Delva, imagine some ways the part might distort during 3D printing, and they pre-distorted the CAD model to compensate for that, printed all those different versions, figured out which one is most accurate, and then replicated that all over the build plate. And it was proved to be repeatable everywhere across the build plate. This is produced on an older laser powder bed fusion machine, an EOS M270 machine that Delva uses for tool steel. The material for this part is MS1 tool steel. Delva got this job because the customer initially assumed these parts would be machined, but got a quoted price per part for machining of about 30 euros per part. By contrast, this uh, high volume, 1,100 pieces per build additive manufacturing approach produces a cost per part that is well under 5 euros per piece. This next part is a fan for cooling data centers. It was on display in the Valken booth. Uh, you might remember Valken from a video that we did last year at Formnext. They have a platform for metal 3D printing with aluminum. Uh, molten metal deposition, MMD, is the process. And they're able to print with aluminum welding wire that gets melted in a crucible before it's deposited through a ceramic nozzle. The advantage of this process is that you end up with an aluminum part that can be anodized, can be welded, can be treated like any other aluminum component out there, including being assembled with uh, off-the-shelf or more conventionally produced parts, which is the case here. So this fan consists of these nine different fins that have been welded to uh, stamped plates. And previously, these fans were manufactured by extruding and then cutting the fan blades. But by changing to additive manufacturing using this system, they were able to optimize the fan geometry, realizing about 10% increase in efficiency. So there are about 600 of these fans needed per data center. And with that efficiency savings across all of them, if you were able to replace all of those fans, Falcon is saying that it could save about 500,000 euro in electricity per year per data center. So great example of how optimizing through additive manufacturing, design enabled by additive manufacturing, even if it's just for one component of an assembly, can have really big impacts on efficiency and energy savings overall. 3D printing is key to these shoes for competitive bicycling. Uh, so they're provided by Lore. They are tailor-made to the individual bike rider. I talked about this shoe with Lubrizol in their booth. If you think about it, in biking, the, the rider's foot 
is part of the power transmission system. And if there's a hard interface between the foot and the bike, then that, then there's more efficient transmission of power. But that rigid surface means that the fit to the wearer has to be perfect for comfort. So the way that this system works, the, the rider goes to a retailer offering the, the lore system. They get their foot scanned and that scan data is the basis for customized manufacturing through 3D printing. The hard soles are made of PA12 material in multi-jet fusion, HP's process, and then the softer parts of the shoe that hold hold it on the, the rider's foot. Also tailor-made components are made in TPU for multi-jet fusion, supplied by, developed by Lubrizol, and those parts are also made by Avid Product Development, a company we've covered recently, which is also part of Lubrizol. And then a final element for added stiffness, carbon fiber winding around the completed assembly. So. 3D printing for footwear. We've seen customized insoles, for example. Here is a next step, huh? Here's a fully realized 3D printed shoe tailor-made to the wear. Next up are the Separonics ceramic membranes that are part of a water filtration system for water recycling. These are used in applications such as desalination, dealing with industrial wastewater, processing the brine from lithium mining, um, and they are produced by a company called Evove. The problem that Evove was having in manufacturing ceramic membranes in more conventional processes uh, was that they had to deal with randomized porosity. So you end up with pores that are different sizes, different distribution, and so you have smaller pores that might get clogged more easily, you have larger pores that might be letting things through that you don't necessarily want. But by going to lithography-based ceramic manufacturing, or LCM, using technology provided by lithos, they were able to actually actually tune the porosity to be exactly what they wanted it to be. Um, and so each of these, these membranes is 10 centimeters in diameter, it's 5 centimeters tall. In the actual filtration module, you need 20 of these stacked together, so the full filter module is like a meter long. By shifting to LCM 3D printing, they were able to tune the porosity, get it evenly spaced, um, get the pores exactly the right size, and realize a lot of benefits in the filtration system. They were able to reduce the energy usage of the system by 80%, improve the throughput by five times, and enable the recycling of up to 80% more water. This automotive battery cover was produced on a power print machine from Krauss Maffei. Larger deposition style additive manufacturing machine, like a two meter by 2.5 meter build table. 20 of these parts were made per build. And the automaker initially believed that it would need to produce these parts through molding. The final full scale production run of these parts will be molded. This is the run of parts that has to be evaluated, has to be be tested and so these parts have to be very very close to the final production components and it did not seem that additive manufacturing would produce parts that were close enough but the power print system uses an enclosed build volume and temperature control and Krauss Maffei was able to validate that these parts could be 3d printed in the same 20% carbon fiber infill ABS material that will be used in the final production parts, two properties that are very close to and repeatably close to the final production parts. And that validation saved the automaker a lot because to obtain the prototype mold, forget the parts, just to get the mold would require an eight week lead time. By contrast, Krauss Maffei within two weeks was able to deliver all of the parts needed for this initial qualification run. Uh, you can also see here a tool. This, this orange tool was also 3D printed. It's a trimming fixture so that these 3D printed parts can undergo the same machining that the ultimate production parts also will go through. So this fixture was a tool that was provided with the parts, but that was the only tool needed. These parts were produced without any need for a mold tool. 
That's it for this episode of The Cool Part Show. But if you want more insights and takeaways from Formnext 2024, you can see our videos shot on the show floor and listen to our conversation on the AM radio podcast. We'll put links to all that in the show notes. And here's something else we would love you to be a part of. The Cool Parts Show is five years old. We've been doing this show for five years, and to celebrate, we're going to try something new. We're going to do a live stream. It's on December 12th. We are going to share updates about cool parts we've covered on the show. We're going to respond to questions we get live from viewers. We're going to give away some swag. It will be a lot of fun. Please join us. So again, that's Thursday, December 12th. It'll be 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you're on YouTube, you can actually sign up to get notified, get reminded about the live stream when it's going to happen. We really hope that you can join us. Sign up. Join us, join us. Thanks for watching.